Okay. Claire, first of all, um, how did you get involved in this? What happened? I got involved personally for myself. No, I mean in terms of what happened on Sunday. But... Oh, okay. Um, well, I knew there was a band there. I was currently coming back that way anyway on my way home. Uh, so I obviously came down that the road adjacent to it. I stopped and could see that obviously there was Heather, her husband, and another guy who is very quiet, and uh, another guy who I kind of know of, and probably about six or so security. So there was a lot of people and it was dark. Um, I did look for the unmarked vehicle because I knew there was gonna be an unmarked vehicle parked somewhere else because I could see the van and then the support car parked behind it. So I decided to drive around and park quite far behind the support car. One of the security, if you call them that, um, approached me because he knows me and said, oh, hello, how are you? Are you okay? And I said, oh, yes, yeah, good to see you again. What are you doing here, as I always say? Uh, so it was a little bit of a chat. We'd never have known that there had been an incident beforehand and that police were called because he was very calm and collective and very friendly and chatty and smiley. Um, with that, there was a lot of people, mainly obviously the six security were kind of around the vans, around the support cars. Um, I've walked up, so I'm kind of between the van and the support car. And with that, they decided that they were going to get the van out of there. Heather, her husband, and the, uh, the, the other two guys, they were on the side of the road. As you know, it's a narrow lane on the verge. Excuse me. <coughs> and as the van obviously had to pull out quite sharply, he clipped definitely two of them. So as he went through, obviously there was a little bit of commotion that you're hitting them. Um, they just banged on the van saying, you're hit, you've hit us. I had obviously was at the front of the support car by this point and I turned round to the security I'd been talking to and I said, you can't let that van leave. I said, because they, he's just hit them and plus the police are coming. I think maybe Heather thought that I was talking to her, but at this point, they are more into the road and had been looking at the van as it was driving off. And then Heather's obviously turned round, still holding her sign, as the passenger of the security got into the car and was ushering them to drive off. I'm now behind the support car and the other guy, they caught one guy um, with the, the wing um, near the wing mirror. So he was banging, saying, what are you doing? Stop, you're, you're, you're hitting us. And that's when obviously Heather was sort of leaning on the bonnet um, and then they continued, she tried to walk out of the way to get over to the side. And that's when they just went and just literally knocked her over to the side. I'm shouting at the security, they've just run her over and they just carried on going off to wherever their unmarked car was. I then chased, well, sort of ran down the road to try and get a picture of the reg but they were trying to get out of the way so quickly they had to go into the because there was two oncoming vehicles now stopped they had to actually go into the bushes to get around this car that was waiting so they kind of forced their way through so i ran back to my car i got in my car and i decided to catch up with them and follow them which i did for a few miles until i was able to actually stop them by stopping at a roundabout because I, we'd gone on to a dual carriageway so I did actually overtake them after the support car tried to cut me up um, and basically stood in front of the van because they joined whilst on the front of the police the whole time saying I'm on the front of the police you are not leaving because you have just run someone over and the van was still continuing to try and move with me in front of the van. What do you think of what happened to Heather? I think it's disgraceful. I have actually spoken to that security guy today and he has said to me, oh, we're here to protect the vehicle and protect all the people. And I did say to him today, you didn't do a very good job, did you? Because you walked away from that and you know that regardless of your job, you should never have let that vehicle drive away. What is you? What are you as protesters actually doing? When these I wouldn't label us as protesters. We have obviously in the last week or so been labelled protesters. I will always proclaim that, especially for ourselves in this area, we are local residents in a 
small village forward slash town who care very deeply about what is happening to elderly and vulnerable people. It needs to be stated where we are in Biggin Hill, our transport system is not good. We don't have trains, we don't have trams, we have one small supermarket and a few handful of shops and we live in the valleys and we are surrounded by countryside. One part of Biggin Hill doesn't even have a bus and that's uphill. So for all these people, you know, who might say, I'll go and buy a new car, we have the scrappish scheme, but a lot of people, their cars had devalued massively. So £400 for a car that had been currently worth £2,500, they can't afford to go and buy a new car, especially if you're a pensioner or you're you know, a vulnerable person or a disabled person. And it, we have elderly people now who now can't get out of their homes. They can't walk to the shops because they've got to go up a hill, a very steep hill to get to a shop. So that was my personal intention. When you're trying to frustrate the camera vans, what exactly Don't are you doing? Don't frustrate do them. Pardon? Don't try to frustrate what, them. What are you doing then with, with your... One sole purpose. That is to hold a sign that covers that camera so they cannot fraudulently find innocent people. We're in a cost of living crisis. People are being taxed left, right and centre and people cannot afford it. And they are so stressed. These people who do have non-compliant cars around here are very stressed, very worried and they might only want to go a quarter of a mile to the shop and they run the risk of being fined 90 pounds by one of these cameras. So if I can stand there, I've lived in this community my entire life, everybody pretty much knows everyone. And if I can stop that car that's just come around that's non-compliant from getting a 90 pound fine and worrying about how they're going to pay it, then I will. Even if you put yourself at risk? I would not say that we are, were, are putting ourselves at risk, they, TfL, Capita, or whoever they are, who they're employed by, which I believe is, a, some of them are private security firms, it's contracted out, they are putting us at risk. Because some of them, and I'm not gonna say all of them, some of them are trying to incite trouble. I believe there's a deliberate act to label us as protesters and give us that bad name. You know, when, we're not stop oil, <laughs> you know, we are peaceful. I, I, we, we do get on with quite a few of them. Some of them are decent human beings just doing the job. At the end of the day, I've said to them, you are doing a job that you get paid for. We are doing this job for free out of love because we care about the people in our community and we do believe it wrong. Our council did oppose this ULED scheme. And, uh, you know, we will try and be as amenable as po possible. We will never incite any kind of violence. I will not be insulting. I will not be rude. I like to try to get to the bottom of how they feel morally they can do this job. Unfortunately, there are some that are a little bit power hungry. And this is where the problem is. What is the law? What are their actual powers in terms of the law? Okay, that's lovely. There's plenty there. Thank you very much.